Now, not everyone knows about all the cool things you can do with the new Windows 10 calculator app. So I thought I'd just run through that app with you today and just show you what it can do. The first thing you have to do, obviously, is to load it. Now, there's two ways of doing it. You can either type in your search bar here, calculator, and that'll find it for you. Um, or you can just click on the start button and just run through until you find it. There it is there. Now, once you know about this calculator, you're going to want to use it all the time. So I would suggest you pin it to your taskbar. And the way you do that is you just right click calculator. That brings this up. Uh, that's pinned to start, which doesn't help you very much. But uh, here you can pin to taskbar. I've already pinned it to the taskbar. So if I click this now, it'll unpin it. So uh, that's what you do to get it pinned to your taskbar. So let's get on with it now. Right, here it is pinned to my taskbar. So I'll just click on that anytime I want to use it. So click there. And that brings up the standard window. Now, uh, just to give you a, a few tips on how you can use this, uh, if you don't want it this big, you can just go to the edge and drag it in or one of the corners. But when you do that, just notice what happens. You see up here you've got a history and a memory, which I'll talk about in a minute. But if you make it too small, you'll see they disappear. And that's not great. So it's better to have it uh, large enough so that those two can come up because they're quite useful. Now, another thing that's useful is if you're working on a document and you don't want your calculator window to keep disappearing every time you click on the document, then there's a handy feature here. If you look here, if I hover on that, it says keep on top. So if I click on that, it nails it to the top right hand corner of my work window. So we'll just go back again. If I go there again, then I can go back to what it was. So we go back to there just to make it larger so we can see what we're doing. Now, one handy feature of this new calculator is the ability to access your history. So if we put in a few numbers like 89 times 2, we say equals, and then something else, 7 times 4 equals. Now, if I want to go back somewhere in, in the history, uh, I could go to this one and I just click on it. It gives me the calculation. It gives me the figure. So it gives me that formula there. So if I wanted to do something else with that, I can just say times 9. And there we are. So I've used something in the history uh, to carry on with a further calculation. So that's pretty handy. And the other thing, very much like a normal calculator, you've got this memory option. So if you click on that one, uh, there's nothing in memory. But if I wanted to put something in memory, let's put this in memory. So if we go to that, that's to store it in memory. I click on there and there it is in memory. Um, if I wanted to make that larger, I could say I could go 8 plus. So now that's added it to the memory or I could go 8 minus. So that's taken it out again. And if I wanted to use the figure that's in memory, I go to memory recall, which is there. And it's very much like a normal calculator. And then I can use that figure in calculations as well. And if I want to clear memory, I just go clear memory and there it is. It's all gone. So those two features are pretty handy in this new app. Now, it's important to remember that when you close this app, um, you lose everything. You lose what's in memory, etc. So just be careful if you close the app. Now, let's get on to something a bit more interesting. There's these three little bars here, and that opens up the different modes that you can use in this calculator. So let's click on there. Now, we've been in standard mode, and uh, that's what you'd use most of the time. But depending on what you want to do, you've got scientific mode. And I won't go through that because um, that doesn't concern us today. Uh, but you've got um, a lot of features here. Uh, which if you if you need a scientific calculator, this is pretty handy. And then you've got graphing, which has also got a lot of features that you can use. If you're a 
computer programmer. You've got all these options here. Now this is quite a handy one, a date calculation. So let's click on that, I'll show you that one. So if you've got two dates, uh, let's say um, you're gonna go on holiday somewhere in the future. Um, so this is today's date, so we click there and we say uh, our holiday starts on the 23rd of September. That now tells me I've got two months, three weeks and one day to wait, uh, 84 days in total. So that's pretty handy, I like that one. So let's go back to these options. Now you've got various converters. Now you can go on the internet and do the same thing, but this is so handy, you've got it right here. Now let's have a look at this one. Currency. So there we've got United States dollars and Australian dollars. We'll just use that as an example. The one that's uh, in bold is the one that you're gonna be using. So uh, let's say, what's seven American dollars? Today, seven American dollars is 9.35. This thing's clever. It looks it up on the internet for you and gets the latest uh, exchange rate and it gives you the details down here. And then of course, if you wanted to change currencies, you just drop down that menu and you can go to whatever you like. There's the Zambian quacha and uh, the Australian dollar. That's, th that's how many dollars you'll get for seven quacha. So that's pretty useful. And the same on this side. And if you wanted to switch them around, you just take the other option uh, for the top and the bottom. It only accepts entries for the top one that's in bold. So if that's your starting currency, then you'd have to have that one on top. So that one's very handy. And then, you know, it's often that we, uh, for instance, uh, cooking or something like that, and you need to know what a teaspoon is in milliliters. So let's go one teaspoon is 4.92 milliliters and that's fantastic and also with you've got weights four pounds is 1.8 kilograms so that's very very handy now just so we can see the rest of them i'll just go to full screen for the moment here we go let's get back to here uh, there's temperature uh, for instance if you're cooking and you want to know what 350 degrees Fahrenheit is, 176 Celsius. So that's another fantastic one to be able to use. And then uh, if you're worried about weight loss, let's go to kilojoules. And you can work and see how many calories there are in, say, one kilojoule. One kilojoule is nearly a quarter of a calorie. So that's another fantastic one that you'll use quite a lot. So, the, I mean, you'd have to go through all of these and depending on uh, what you're doing at the time, um, you'll find something here that will help you. Right, now, if you found this useful, please like and share this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And if you have any comments or questions, we'd love to hear from you. If you just scroll right down to the bottom, you'll find the comment section there. Thank you very much for watching.